drafts have already been done. I still expect a lot of like high action on both sides. We can see it already. Lee Sin coming out in the jungle, Gwen TF soul laners, but very similar setup on the opposite side. Volibear, another early skirmishing jungle coming out with Akali Nocturne. So you have a global there in one of your soul lanes that would want to look for picks can help you find and set up another side lane early on. The only difference is we get the, the hyper carry coming out from the side of LNG with the Jinx to where we're sticking with the Varus for Eyeboy and we get the Rakan coming out. So I think two decently similar comps in terms of like the options available in terms of globals looking towards another side lane. Both have pretty good early skirmishing power. I do think this will be highly dependent on Ale and Fofo. How's the Gwen gonna do in these skirmishes? How how long is the Akali gonna be able to survive? How much time can you buy with your Shroud? Can you find a good ultimate onto mm -hmm. the Jinx? And, and you know, pretty much take her out right away because if you do that, the fight should be good for RA. So these are the key players we need to be looking at later on. Early on though, it's gonna be all about Tarzan and Le Yen. A bit interesting to see Tarzan bringing out the Lee Sin. He has been one of our junglers that has preferred just kind of staying true to, you know, farming his jungle. We do see him lean towards bot quite heavily. That is like the one habit of LNG is even if he doesn't get too involved with top or mid all that much, you know, when it comes to Tarzan and Iwandi and Light, they just love linking up together. I feel like um, this Lee Sin jungle is becoming incredibly high priority in the LPL, but I... It's one of the weird ones where I don't think it's because everyone wants to run Lee Sin jungle. It's because they don't want... They want to early pick Lee Sin in the draft. But then if you just immediately guarantee it's going into a solo lane, then you can get counter picked. So it ends up being flexed into the jungle quite regularly. So interesting to see. Not I do, something we've seen a ton from LNG. I do feel like you make a good point not only on just like the the flex pick potential but that opens up a larger kind of devolve in junglers to where right we've seen Zinzao grow a uh, higher priority the, the more and more lpl's come it feels like we've seen more volley bear in the past week than we did see in week one and week two so definitely a lot of teams leaning in towards early skirmishing and early prio coming out i can't remember what teams it was the other day but I remember it was just LeBlanc Volley Bear became like the most contested picks of the series. And if you can gain that early prior, if you can gain that early skirmishing power, you were the team that was likely to win. So it's kind of cool to see it go back into that, but still have things like the, the Rumbles and the Dianas be viable. So it does feel like we've evolved into having these different options in terms of play pattern and not just be lumped in like Spring, where it's like, well, Hecarim, say, Udyr yeah. every game. And if you don't have them, you just lose. The comparison in splits is just on a different level, isn't it? Well, we've got literally two viable junglers in spring and now coming into summer, it's just, you can go in any direction you want. It's so exciting to see. And, and in more recent patches that will be coming out over the next uh, couple of weeks in LPL, things like the Hecarim can come back in because he got a bunch of buffs. I think it was 11.13 he got buffed. Um, obviously, 11.14 is now live, uh, I believe, on, on actual live service. So, it does feel like it, it's going to be an exciting few weeks for LPL. As Tarzan going to start off on the bottom side here with that crab. It's going to be Leanne getting the top side crab. But I want to talk big picture compositions here for a second, Lyric, because I feel like things have flipped around from game number one. This time around with this Twisted Fate mid with a Lee Sin and a Gwen in the top side. It feels like LNG can really put the pressure on in the early game. Yeah, it's it's really cool because LNG not only have ability to put up early pressure, especially from the fact that their global is mid as compared to top right. You have two options with where you can look for it. You can more easily even just like invade bottom side jungle as compared to with Cube, who sure you can feel facilitate Loyen maybe looking for top side jungle or look for a mid play, but that's about the extent of it. But for LNG, you've also kept the scaling elements. You have the Jinx there. You have a lot of peel coming out from the Thresh, and you also have Gwen, who's just going to be able to take over team fights later on. So I feel like. LNG's comp has more options in terms of how it plays out, to where RA has a very similar comp in terms of the same early skirmishing power, the same uh, global presence, but not as dynamic in terms of how many ways you can play out the map, and I'd say not as strong later on, though it definitely can take fights <laughs> later on, it's just, can you burst light out early? Hmm, I'm, I'm gonna give you three guesses, Lurik. See if you can guess where Tarzad is in the early game. That's right. <laughs> It's the mid lane, it's the bot lane middle brush. Because uh, this guy, he just loves sitting in those bot lane brushes. I swear he does it every single game. Yeah, I mean, when I looked at his jungle proximity, I thought it'd be really high towards towards Ale and, and Icon just because of the meta. But actually, I think Ale might have the, the lowest or second lowest prox to his jungle in the whole LPL. And for Tarzan, it's all about the bot lane, like we, like, like we said. He's always going to be around this lane. 
guarantees them the the reset that they're looking for so the berserker greaves gonna come out for light they're gonna get back to lane shouldn't miss too much but now it's gonna be about iwandi moving with tarzan hoping to pick up that top side scuttle while his top laner is getting pushed in but icon already gonna start to lean as well maybe just make sure everything's all right because that one still hasn't spawned quite yet so tarzan gonna be moving up towards the top side here first drake is onto the map this time of Callista as icon grabs himself a lantern fofo inside his shroud and we'll just have to use the second proc of his <laughs> and all he's gone <laughs> okay well we had a play towards the top side that unfortunately we didn't get to witness i believe oh leon wasn't even six though so there was a tower to find, try and do that one as icon flashes under the tower but he doesn't get a kill oh it's a disaster the spell shield was too early from cube though so didn't block the gold card, it means Icon will walk away. Yeah, and somehow, you know, it's kind of sad. We, we ended up missing all of the action, pretty much, right? Hung goes down in the end. It looked like Fofo and Hung were fine. They were both hovering around each other. Sure, Fofo doesn't have ultimate. We saw him blow that in the initial skirmish in mid lane when he had to ult away. But so far, LNG doing a nice job of, of picking up some early kills. But like you said, a bit tragic for, for Icon looking for the pick on Lil Yen, not able to find it. And in the end, we're going to default to a bit of a, a bit of a standard game. iBoy having a bit of pressure down in bot right now, but Light has the push. Not surprising, very easy for Jinx to get the push in a lot of matchups just from changing to your rocket, especially when you do have this Thresh in the bot side as well, which does have a lot of lane prowess in the 2v2. And it looks like already going to utilize that to pick up that first strike as we see here i mean just extremely decisive oh, wow. right he doesn't even have time to respond with lo yen going for the q into the flash play and stunning him down as now we're going to get to see how hung dies i want hitting the death sentence making sure hung isn't able to stop the port out from twisted bait and he just gets punished for it oh and another death sentence as well but we got Captain Jack down in that bottom side. Instant cleanse out from High Boy keeps him safe there. I will be unfortunately unable to manage to make the play happen on the bottom side. So we're going to be even in gold here. But importantly, that top side getting ahead for RA. It's actually kind of important when we talk about the big picture for the side of LNG because that was the side that we were thinking Icon was likely to play towards. We thought, you know, first Destiny very likely to go towards the top side, and it did. But it was in response as opposed to being a proactive play. And the other big thing about it as well, right? Now Q can start making this play. He can start hovering towards mid. You have an immobile mid laner on the opposite side his, whose flash is down. You have what's well, pretty much two assassins, right? Because Nocturne, pretty much an assassin at this point, up against Twisted Fate. So anytime he has to overextend, he's just going to get taken out. That's why you should expect to see Iwandi hovering around the mid lane quite a bit this game, as we have seen him doing. And then for LNG, it's weird because I don't feel like you can really divert your resources into playing for bot because I, I don't feel like the, the nature of the matchup works that way. It'll be very hard to take them down. You have so much mobility on the side of Hong. You still have summoners up for Eyeboy. You don't have a very aggressive 2v2 lane down there. So it'll still be very solo lane focused for LNG. I feel like you just got to make the next Destiny count as Icon, who's about to have it up once again. As now we're seeing a bit of a, a dynamic switch. We see Fofo making his way down bot. He has TP, but iBoy has come up. So Ari definitely want to look for this fight. LNG, the ones with five members right now as Light is already in the mid lane, but here comes the TP. Lian looking for the engage onto Iwandi. Hung still has quickness available. It's going to be taken by Lian. Now the fight to follow and just annihilation from the side of RA. Easy kills and it's a double for Fofo. Once again, he is on top of the matchup. They get themselves the Herald. They get themselves everything off of that fight. And for RA, it was so easy, right? They bring in the TV from Fofo. I'm actually a bit confused why they even sent him towards spot in the first place. Wasn't even able to push the wave out at all. But point is, he shows up. And then they have a lot of ways of starting the fight, right? Lo Yen can jump in. Hung can go in. Fofo and Cube can both easily follow up. You look at the side of LNG, though. You don't really have a great way of actually starting off a fight. You have Death Sentence. Maybe uh, Tarzan can find some kind of ward hop into his kick. But in this position, no way of starting one up. You don't even have to box it as I want you to try to dissuade the, the engage coming out. The fact that RA is even able to pick up the Herald on top of that is so massive. And then just a ton of AoE coming in from, you know, all members of RA just being able to jump on top of LNG. And LNG doing that, uh, that classic move of just kind of staring at your enemy across from you and not being able to do anything.
Look, we always talk about jungle support duos. It's not usually in terms of Hung doing the layup, knocking them both into the air for Leanne to jump in and just slam dunk them into the floor with the volley ult. That was just beautiful to witness in slow motion right there. And now Fofo is set up massively for success, right? 2-0-1 on this Akali. He's getting close to finishing his mythic very early on into the game. We're going to get very quickly to the point where Fofo once again becomes this monster that is so incredibly difficult to deal with. And they have a lethality virus, which again, I've talked about this on cast before, often kind of functions as a follow-up to an assassin, right? Where you can either get the health bars low to set up for your assassin, or you can be the one just to do that last little bit of damage after Fofo's done the brunt of the work. And now we're in a very different situation in the last game with, with what you're talking about in the sense that RA feel like they're much happier in terms of team fights at this point, especially with the lead that they've gained because you look at LNG's composition, it, it, it needs to be on objective first. You don't have a great way of running into RA. And typically when you have a TF, you can be like, yeah, you don't need to be on objective first because you have the destiny to come out. You can spot where the enemy is. You can try and find that angle with the rapid fire cannon, the gold card, the Zanyas, all is good, but... You're going to be behind. RA are going to dictate the terms of the action. They're going to be already be able to break down this, this tier 1 turret top, open up the map for cube. They just have so many options right now. It's where for LNG, your only chance of finding any gold on the map is just finding picks with your Twisted Fate. But when he's consistently getting pushed in in mid, you don't even have those opportunities. That's the problem is... Fofo just has massive kill threat onto Icon at this point. Like, he really can't go for the 1v1. So, it does feel difficult for Icon to be able to influence the game here. Got a replay in the bottom corner. I'm not entirely sure. Oh, they went for a dive. But I, uh, Light, sorry, managing to survive, at least for the time being. But now, look at his health bar underneath that tower as iBoy can just continue to layer those piercing arrows in. They don't want to let him go back to base. I'm not sure if they could see him, though. He will cancel the recall anyway. Yeah, also, interestingly, as we move to taking a look at items, we should have a Frostfire Gauntlet coming out for Leyen instead of the Divine Sunder. So, maybe looking at his comp, realizing, hey, we're ahead, we're stronger in team fights, let's all in on this aspect. I'm just going to build to being a straight up frontliner. They don't even have too much damage later on, if you think about it, because Twisted Fate's going to be all utility. Tarzan's going to fall off quite hard as well in terms of like damage numbers. It's going to be all up to Ale and Light. So, I think I like this from RA, just keeping it keeping it safe, keeping it standard in terms of, hey, we build this way, we have a standard composition, we have one front line in the Volley Bear, we have our follow-up in Hung, and then we have all of our damage dealers in the back line. So, RA, once again, going to be stacking up those Drakes, sitting on two. We have an Ocean Soul, so that's definitely going to feel all right. I feel like Ocean Soul has fallen off a little bit ever since... I can't remember if it got nerfed, but I, I think especially the split with the ease of access to Grievous Wounds is something that, that definitely yeah. hurts it. You know, Oblivion Orb only being 800 gold is is, is definitely massive. So, And Gwen. Gwen's a, a great uh, champion at applying Grievous Wounds as well. We've got to this weird point in the game's timeline where Ocean Soul a lot of the time feels less impactful than just Conqueror when it comes to just straight up healing. Like when you look at champions like Gwen that go for the, the maximum stacks, Conqueror, like scissor blast on multiple people that she like basically heals her health herself to full which ocean soul it's incremental healing it doesn't feel like that's uh, significant enough in a lot of these fights with how much burst damage is available on a lot of champions in the current meta so definitely a weird spot in the game when it comes to healing and it does feel like things like the ocean soul quite often not really enough anymore but just look at the state of this game right here after game number one been so incredibly close the entire time. Oh, right, a rate of 5,000 gold ahead, or I guess four, four and a half thousand gold ahead of LNG at this point. We're only 14 minutes in. That is a monumental lead. Tarzan wants to change it. Is Leyen going to get pulled in? There's Icon coming in as well. He flashes out, but Leyen will get chased down. And LNG finally find themselves a pick so close to getting the Chain of Corruption onto light there, but Ironboy can't quite find it. I'll have to back away, but... Light has to be a little cautious himself because Hung is here. And Light might have gone too far for this one. Hung going to get the quickness there. Going to get the knockup as well. And just going to get taken out. He flew too close to the sun. Really nice bait coming out from RA. LNG almost found, you know, a small opening on the map with that pick they find in the top side. You can start uh, putting pressure up there. But with Light going down as well, now it's just going to be evened out across the board. You're going to have to send resources mid to answer this wave as we see Tarzan doing now. And then 
Uh, that whole time, Fofo just left untouched in the bottom side, able to further his own lead, push some waves into turret. Looks like he's stealing away Krugs as well. So only getting stronger and stronger on this pick. And for RA, I, I feel like LNG is probably their best stylistic matchup out of the top teams. Like when you think about EDG and, and FPX, just from the fact that RA and LNG early on play a very similar style. They, they're, they again, very very safe in the first 15 minutes, very uh, low action, uh, risk averse, I feel like is the best word. But I feel like RA, the way they draft is one, they try to get stronger laner, laners and, and more counter picks. So their win rate on red side is much higher. And it feels like they value neutral objectives much higher than LNG does. So when it comes to dragons and rift heralds, RA, you know, head and shoulders above LNG in those areas. It's not until mid game where typically we see RA fall off, especially with, uh, I think, Lil Yen and iBoy both being prone to questionable choices. We saw in the WE series, Lil Yen on the Volley Bear continuously running in to, to kill missing and just always throwing away his life so if I can get enough of an advantage early on it feels like those mid-game decisions are a lot harder to mess up because the game becomes a lot easier and more telegraphed so so what you're saying is a lot of RA's losses are really they are their own biggest opponent it's just like can you survive your own shot calling in the mid game if so you're going to be looking real good as a team well right now as uh, as we mentioned in game number one any game comes uh, mid game sorry comes a lot earlier nowadays we are very much into that. It does feel like RA doing pretty good so far, getting themselves another Herald that they'll be able to grab themselves at minimum that tier one in the mid lane. You would expect them to slam it mid to try and finish that tower off. Just take out all three of the tier ones. And then in 45 seconds, we've got another Drake coming up. So that Herald can be used to buy that pressure and set up for the Drake. Yeah, so now we're going to see... Both teams start moving their vision lines towards bottom side. RA right now are the team who pretty much has vision control on the full map, but LNG <laughs> guaranteeing themselves control on top Sorry. side. I don't know if you saw that. Fofo missed the Cata minion, and I saw him like physically cringe on the webcam. He was like, no, my Cata minion. <laughs> that was just extremely entertaining to me. If anyone's if anyone saw that, like just get a clip of that please and put it on Twitter or something because that was hilarious. Like the the pain in his he could he felt it in his soul when he lost that kind of movie. Hey to be fair, that's a feeling we all know and I know it's a feeling that you know pro players uh feel even more from back in my my coaching days but it looks like lng actually not going to contest for the dragon they just want to go for the gold trade on the opposite side of the map right now which is something i can understand right you're you're very far behind you know you can't win out in fights we hit on earlier how they need to be on objectives first realistically if they want to be set up in an advantageous position especially with the fact that they don't have any vision control right now but now it's like you know do or die in five minutes you need to fight there's no other option there's no gold trade coming out the question is, will they be able to, you know, get enough items onto Light, onto Ale, and then will they be able to force themselves where they're in a position of Pryo to be able to get there first and to get their vision set down and to force RA to come into them to where you can have Iwandi and Icon peeling for Light? I feel like this is just, this is cushy for RA, right? They're just sitting here, they're chilling through the mid-game. The part of the game that they often find the hardest is this mid-game. It's down to the shot calling, but when you're this far ahead, as you said, it's very easy to just posture for each objective and know that your opponent can't really do much about it. LNG have fallen so far behind that this Twisted Fate pick for Icon as well doesn't feel like it can significantly influence the map because it's not like he can side lane against the Nocturne or an Akali at this point in the game. So it doesn't feel like he can have influence in that way. And it's going to be very difficult to find a pick onto things like the Akali. It's difficult to find picks onto the Nocturne as well because quite often with that spell shield, he could be a little bit slippery. And this is all 11.12 um, still as well. So the the, the Ankle Breaker. I, I don't know why, but Ankle Breaker is the only name I know for that item. Um, the Stride Breaker, that's it. Still has the dash on it. Ale looking for Q, but will spell shield away from the needles. He's going to be fine off in the side lane. Um, and yeah, it, it just feels very, very difficult for the side of LNG to to get any opportunities in this one. The gold lead is just increasing. It's now up to 5,000. And again, the, the Prowler's Claw as well, still pre-nerf. So I boy having that dash towards minions if he wants to set up a play with the Chain of Corruption, but also having the better stats. Yeah, and you know, okay, we're gonna see an engage. Okay, Hung is here. Yeah, Cube and a Ale just starting off with a 1v1, but in comes the jungler, Lien, or Hung, sorry, uh, there to, to help things out. 
It's an easy pickup. And that's the beautiful thing about the Nocturne, right? You can catch people out so easily. And, you know, you already hit on it, but LNG just has no options at this point in terms of how their composition wants to play out against RA's comp with the lead. RA are also doing a phenomenal job of trying to choke them out with vision, and they're looking for another engage. Oof, I wonder he barely gets out of that one. Had to flash away. The Flame Chomp is coming out from Light to try and protect him as well. And you know, look how many abilities Lien is just soaking. He was just stood there in the middle of everyone's poke damage and just barely took any damage at all. Now contest over the red buff here. Looks like it should reset though. So neither team will be able to force that one. TP being channeled just to contest a red buff at this point as Ale does not want to allow this to go for RA. But RA are like, all right, well, we'll just back away. Like, at best case, we got a red buff here. But instead, we just take a TP instead. Like, that's essentially like taking an objective for RA. And they're able to pop the Predator and go for it again. Oh my goodness, I want he's in trouble once more. Lien might have gone too deep though. Tarzan kicks him back and finishes him off. That's the second time this game has been able to pull that one off. And now a follow-up engage as Icon goes in. There's only four members here for RA. The Shuriken goes in. Fofo looks to back away from this one. Good pick coming out from LNG in the end. No Munchables, that was not a good pick from LNG. That was, that was literally PTSD of RA's last series of Lo Yen being on Volley Bear, chasing, missing down. I even think Missing was on Thresh that game. And, and, and then just, you know, getting killed. That was the game, uh, I think it, that was the Dr. Mundo game where WE didn't look like they knew what Dr. Mundo does. But yeah, this, these are the types of things that happen in RA games where everything's so good, right? They're, they're like pushing in bot, they're pushing in mid, they're getting vision, they're contesting. We see Lo Yen here going a bit too far forward. Hung was already leaving. You can look at your minimap as well. Bofo was on his way out, goes for it, gets locked down by all the peel coming out, all the CC, because he's the only member there. And then he throws away a bit of tempo, a bit of an opportunity for RA to be able to capitalize. So we just saw, we've seen a prime example of how RA gets leads, plays through those leads, but we've also seen the big downfall of RA and why, why they aren't able to always cleanly transition these leads into wins. And it's one of the reasons that so many viewers at home, so many analysts, often doubt our rate, right? Is that they do make these mistakes quite often. We do see things that just go a little bit awry. Players like Lien, players like iBoy, kind of notorious for being a bit hit or miss, being inconsistent. But enough about their history, because right now in the present, we've got Motion Soul coming up in 30 seconds time. And LNG, they surely have to fight for this one. Yeah, but we need to keep our eyes on RA, right? Because it's all about the combo we saw earlier, Hung bringing them up, Lien dunking them down. Oh, Lien goes back in onto Iwandi once more. He's pulled in once more, but this time he's tanky enough. The Piercing Arrow barely misses. And in goes Cube to try and finish off the kill. Cancels his ult with his Strike Breaker. And now the rest of the team can just follow up. It is too easy for RA. They just have better items. They just have better champions. 10 to 3 on the scoreboard as RA just clean house and look to the Baron. Yeah, and we saw, right, Lo Yen get someone a bit low, Q able to follow up with the paranoia, and then once all the members of RA get in there, there's just no way to answer as the side of LNG. You don't have any disengage options, and even when they were able to chunk out Lo Yen themselves, right, they don't actually have any real way of following up onto the fight, so RA are going to be able to take it. They're not only going to get the Baron, but Dragon's still up. This would be soul for them. Cube and Fofo both have TP to follow that one back up. As we do go into the replay, I want to try to find a death sentence, Lian deciding, hey, I'm gonna go in. Looks like RA don't want to commit to this too early because Fofo is still following up on the play. The paranoia is gonna come out and sure you have a Zanius to keep that one safe, but there it is. Jungle support synergy coming out strong. Both of you jump in, buys time for Fofo to be able to follow up as well. Doesn't matter if I Iboy's not close either, has so much range with those Qs that RA just made it look so easy. No peel, no disengage available for LNG. Iboy is essentially like Zareth's support at this point in the game. It doesn't really matter. As long as he gets a couple of Qs in, he'll be fairly useful. And we'll be able to get that long-range CC as well. LNG desperate to contest this one. This would be probably game if RA are able to get it. And immediately they jump onto the back line here. Iwandi barely surviving as the Drake will be taken. It's the silver lining for LNG here. Lien getting chased out of this one, but Ali stunned up on the front line. He'll turn golden, keep himself safe. There's a knockout from Hung, though. The quickness still going, and Ali goes down. It was close, but not close enough. And Icon, once again, the last man standing, and once again, 
There's just not enough in these fights from LNG. At least they stopped the salt. I mean, at least this time, right, they got they got on the Drake. So that's the big thing. So now they have an angle to where they're able to get their damage off onto the members of RA. You can try and throw a gold card on, on who's ever engaging, buy more space for light to deal damage. Ale can put off a ton of AoE. I'm a bit surprised we saw RA devolve into two different fights, right? We saw Nocturne go one way to where Lil Yen has to go fight the members in the pit because you're trying to fight for that Dragon Contest. Maybe as RA, you just all in for the Dragon and try and get that soul, and then maybe the, the, the fight's fine, but... We did hit on earlier how, you know, Ocean Soul maybe not as valuable as it once was. As the engage is going to come out, as we see here, two different fights, right? Lil Yen and Hung on one side, Fofo and Cube on the other. And they are going to be able to get some good picks with Cube, uh, the Thresh already taken out. Then the members of LNG have to flash and dash over the pits where you're able to get more kills on the side of RA. But like you said, it didn't really seem like LNG's goal was necessarily taking the fight as much as it was stopping Soul. RA's goal is to take the fight though, is they just jump straight onto the three members of LNG that are trying to push up the mid lane. It's a hook onto Lian, but it does nothing. It's hung. Rejoins his team once more, trying to protect Lian from some of that damage. Surviving, though, from LNG, as they will be able to get out of that play. But now, with the Baron, with a uh, Lethality Virus as well, it's incredibly easy to just play out these long siege scenarios. Highboy can back away once again. He can wait for the next wave. He can just keep throwing these piercing arrows out. And it's incredibly difficult to survive on the side of LNG to be able to contest these sieges. But look where Cube has gone as well. Moves up to the top side of the map. They can pressure out, finish off that last tier two. Even if they can't finish off an inhib here, they'll still be able to get at minimum a tier two turn. Yeah, and it looks like they should be able to threaten this. Cyboy able to put off autos freely. Lo Yen Fofo hovering. Oh, so they should get this. I don't know if a fight will come out just yet because we still know Cube's finishing off top turret. So maybe you wait for that one. I think you should have the paranoia up. And then maybe you can look for a fight. And Cube is having an exceptional game for himself. Obviously, Fofo has been really unbelievable across this series. Hong as well on this Rakan looking really good. There's the mid inhib taken. I'm just going to use Shirelia's battle song to get out of the play once more. I think they actually gave away Cube's recall there because they cleared a ward that was right next to him that, that would have given vision, but doesn't matter. No pick comes out. He'll still get away with things. And Now, after game number one, it feels like Ale has had a weird series, right, Lyric? Where it started off so good for him on the Fiora. He had like 20 minutes of really top tier Fiora gameplay. He has the one throw in the mid game in game number one. And since that moment, just just fell off a cliff. I don't know if his mental broke. I don't know if it's just a, a matter of the matchup in game number two here. But the rest of game number one didn't look so hot. And now game number two, obviously he was getting dived in the early game. There's only so much you can do, but he's having a really rough time. So this is a really interesting topic because, you know, me and you were talking about this a lot the other day, this series in general, because I spam so... Okay, we're going to oh, get engaged. No. no time to talk. Can, can he get away? Is Looks like he's good. I think he's okay. He's okay. Continue your point. I don't know if I can continue my point because now we have Ale being the one to posture for a fight. But I actually went back and watched a bunch of the LNG series. And like teams like JDG and TT really punish them by punishing Ale. Because Ale reminds me a lot of how Bin was playing last year where... You're almost always playing like you have your jungler around. The difference for Bin last year is he always did. Oh my god, much oh, another engage comes out. I boy is gonna be fine. Now TP to answer LNG. Have they gone too far? Did they use too much? Hung wants to find the engage, but he won't. So the answer was uh, no, they haven't gone too far. No, they haven't used too much. Um, I they're mean, gonna back away this again. Is <laughs> This is why fans will never have to worry about like narratives or narrative points in the LPL because the games yeah. just don't allow it. You guys don't get narrative from us because these teams want action, which I'm totally fine with. I'm totally happens, down with action all the 100 out of 100 times. Anytime we try and set up a narrative point or try and talk stats in a big way, immediately the teams will force a fight on us. Uh, we're, we're never allowed to talk about that stuff. Here we go, 15 seconds. This will be Ocean Soul once again, and Another RA fight. don't want to even flip it. They just want to fight for this one. LNG still going strong as well, I say that. Two members have gone down already. Icon surviving, he flashes out from Iwandi. But Ale left alone once again, one six and one. And that, I think Lyric might just be game. Oh, it definitely is. I mean, RA this time around, very controlled game. I think even in game one, right? We saw the pitfalls of the comp, but very controlled series coming out from RA. Much 
They might be the second best team in LPL right now. At least that's what the schedule says. Only losing to EDG. Ah, yeah. Okay, I'm going to let you have said that on the broadcast. I'm not going to be a part of that conversation. The Nexus is going to fall, though, as RA comfortably take themselves a 2-0 win over LNG. I don't think many people would have seen this coming today, but RA proved that they belong at the top of the table. Look, Munchables, let me add some context. Do I believe <laughs> RA are the second best team in LPL right now? No, that's probably FPX. Actually, I do believe that's FPX, but right now, RA are tied with LNG, right? They're six and one. I guess uh, uh, LNG seven no, no, and one. LNG but, seven and one. So yeah. six and one. And your only loss is to EDG. So I'm just saying, according to the schedule, probably the second best team. But we do have their matchup against FPX the week after next week. So week six, RA versus FPX will be interesting. I think uh, that will be quite a tough matchup for RA. But hey, if RA do that, it's at least going to be a repeat of last split, right? Where RA went on this like ridiculous uh, regular season run. The, the question is... Can you do that in playoffs? Because regular season and playoffs in LPL are two completely different beasts. And I feel like RA yeah. and LNG fall into that same tier of like teams that just don't, like they don't inspire a lot of confidence. Like until you see them do it right, it's 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 when you'll believe it. When yeah. they do it, you'll, you'll believe they can do it. When, when thinking about RA and LNG, I'm very much a, a man of the scientific method. I gotta see it to believe it. That's not the scientific method, but it's science here, okay, guys? Look at the damage, though. I boy getting himself a good game. It wasn't the Fofo show this time around. Fofo getting a lot of those killing blows in the fights. But it was iBoy because these fights were so long and drawn out, and there were so many opportunities for iBoy to just get poke out in the siege with the Baron around these objectives. It felt like iBoy was able to actually have a really, really good game for himself. And as I say that, Fofo is going to be our MVP. So just take everything I just said and forget I ever opened my mouth. Yeah, Fofo, I think, definitely having an exceptional game this time around. I mean, it's just this year. Fofo's had an exceptional year. In in spring, he was a top three mid laner 100%. Right now, he's definitely a top four mid laner. I think you have him, Doonby, uh, Knight, and Scout, you know, up there with him. I think the other three are definitely much flashier. But if you want a man who's going to, like, put up, like, the same level of performance every single game, it is Fofo. Yeah, Fofo, uh, he's been having an amazing split. I'm just sad for iBoy. I feel like iBoy deserved that one. We're going to go into a quick break, and then we're going to be back with yet another banger, because I don't think you boys and girls are going to believe this one. We've got FPX versus IG after the break, and, you know, IG, they've been having a rough split, but maybe that magic will come back just in time to face one of their greatest rivals. We'll have to wait.